And so question 15 then, the last question in paper one of the 2016 higher maths. Here we go, there's a little graph drawn here, a cubic graph, and it says this graph has equation, or it's the graph of the function with this equation here. What are the values for three marks of A, B and K? So that's just one mark each. Well, straight away from this you can see that K is going to be negative because it's an upside down cubic. A cubic should rise up like this. And since it's already factorised, that expression will equal zero when those brackets are zero. So those two numbers would be the values of x that would make them zero. So that would be the same as the a. So you've got a must be, notice that just happens once. There's a clean cut at four. So a is four, the reason being it's a single root. And b at negative 5, notice squared, that's a double root, it's a bounce off the axis, it's a tangent, and the reason that goes there, it's a double root. But it doesn't seem to ask for that in the marking scheme, it just gives you a mark if you say a is 4, and a mark if you say b is negative 5. Remember, it's x minus the root, y, x minus the root. So those roots should be, as they appear here, the values of x that make the answer 0. k, however, I'll need to feed it back in. f of x is k times x minus 4 times x, take away this will be plus 5, and that one's squared because it was the double root, it was the tangent. Well, I've got one thing to find, I need numbers for everything else, and I've got that here. If you put in 1, the answer is 9, f of x is 9. Another way of writing that would be f of 1 equals 9. Put in 1, so it'll be 1 minus 4. Put in 1, so it'll be 1 plus 5. Now I'm just going to work this out. That's negative 3, and that's 6 squared, which is 36. So the answer is negative. So k will be negative. Instead of multiplying them and writing them underneath and start to cancel, it's just a little equation, so you can just keep dividing the side. Divide by 3 takes it down to 3. Divide by 3 again makes that 12. So you're left with 1 over 12 for the third mark. Now, part B, for one mark, the final mark from paper one, says this. You've got this new function, g of x, which is the original one, f of x, only minus d, where d is positive, so it dropped down d. Determine the range of values of d for which g of x, the new one, has only got one root. Now, just now, f of x has got two roots. If you drop it down any further, it then goes to three roots. There's three values of x that'll give a value of zero. And as you keep dropping it down, it's still got three, till it comes to here and it's back to two again. Any further, now you've only got one. Anything down here, it's only got one root. There's only one place where it'll cut the x-axis, as far as the graph's concerned. There's only one value of x, which will make g equal to zero. So how far down did you have to go? Well, you dropped it nine to reach the axis, but it's still got two there. So anything beyond nine will do. So d is greater than nine, and there's your last mark.